the official definition of what is a decent job by I, I law is something noble and is something very futuristic for for the young people. It's something that we want to have. We want to have decent jobs. We want to to contribute. We want inclusion. We want equality. We want all those things that the definition is talking about. But then it's only a dream. Uh, sadly, we are not there yet to to talk about decent jobs because there's the whole question of in the first place, do we even have jobs? So, so that's what I can say. Yeah, it's a noble aim. We aim there. That's what we want. But that's what that's not existing yet right now. Yeah. Something that really struck me when um, I was watching the video on, you know, the international labor organization definition of decent of employment was um, people at the center of development. So basing, uh, you know, that bit of definition from my personal experience uh, here in Kenya, uh, working with um, youth agency, youth led organizations is that um, uh, once in a while you can, you know, you can act as a consultancy in one of their projects and, you know, the project manager will be like, um, you know, we have these funds, you know, to engage the youth, let's say in um, agribusiness activities or, you know, skilled labor but the problem is that we have the money but we don't have young people to utilize the money so one of the major things um uh, i noticed about this typical kind of scenario is that um we might have funds uh, in the country we might have you know donors we might have youth agency having these funds uh, to help young people but young people aren't available because First of all, uh, they are not knowledgeable on, you know, these funds exist. Um, they are not uh, involved in designing the programs. I would say like, uh, that the decent job narrative is a dream, just as Boniface has said, and part of what Timona said, because I feel like from my perspective and the interaction I've had with youths and, you know, around here in Kenya, that decent job, like that terminology itself is like a vocabulary here. People just know about, you know, accessing jobs, um, employability and all that, but they don't know, you know, like the, the, the whole idea around decent jobs, it's not something that many people, especially young people are aware of. So I feel like it's it's not talked about. It's, it's something that is not emphasized. I feel like, uh... Uh, decent for me will be a job that allows me to grow as a professional, also as a as a person. And uh, uh, bringing that to the Kenyan context and uh, to other young people in Kenya, I feel like uh, this only applies to a certain bracket. Uh, why? Because uh, the scarcity of uh, this uh, of the decent jobs that are out there, so they are. Like, with the, the jobs are there, I can't say like, it's just a dream. The jobs are there, but they are scarce. And this and job in Kenya is just a dream, just as the last have said. This is because most of the youths in Kenya depend on informal sector. And you see in, in, in informal sector, the employers pay how they wish. So you get the, the in, in, in formal only a few in formal sector only a few are employed. But in informal sector, a lot of youth are employed there, but they get just a, they don't get even the salary is, is, is not good even for to be called for a decent job. Basically, it's it's a bit difficult for me to say I have a job in the informal sector. And um, basically. Most informal sectors, they just require you to have some certain type of skills. And uh, even if you have the skills, the, the kind of pay you get, it's a bit too low for you to be able to sustain yourself. Basically, that's where the survival part gets in. You just like, you're just earning, but you can't live. It's like you're just surviving. And for a young person, maybe they may think it's better off to survive, but honestly, Surviving is not the way to go for a young individual. If we have to grow and advance ourselves in life. So if we talk about the informal sector, it is not, it can only give us up to around maybe 
of what we require in a decent job environment? Um, it's a very difficult question to answer, actually. In not a simple as or no. I can say technically that um, it's impossible to have decent jobs in the informal economy since we it's in doubt whether we have decent jobs in the formal economy in the first place. So what happens is when you look at the people in the formal economy, um, there's an overlap with the, they have, they have low level of education and low access to technology. And so what we see is that informality is actually a trap. So for them to, 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 to get decent jobs, you have to bring a level of formality. So technically speaking, if you have to bring decent jobs, you have to bring a level of formality. And what governments are doing, what the UN and everybody out there is trying to do is actually to, 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 to break out of informality, you know? So for example, social protection is a big part, part of um, what you call a decent job. So look at the informal economy. Apart from very marginal cases, tell me actually how many people have social protection, you know? And COVID-19 has actually kind of um, revealed that, that Social protection is very important, even for the people in the informal economy. You get so. So technically speaking, I will say that it's it, 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 it's not possible for you to have a decent job in the in the, in the informal economy. In terms of the gender dynamics, I think or I know, uh, based on the research that has been done in the past, we still have an issue with the. Uh, pay not being equal between um, men and women, and also the part of having a genderly equal environment, especially in workspaces. And just to take an example of where some employees still at the moment don't consider uh, maternity leave as leave. And when women um, get pregnant and after that they need to go for maternity leave they're not allowed but instead they're fired so i don't think we are yet at a place where we can say that we are in a um, environment where we have um, equal treatment of both men and women in workspaces but i think we are at a place where if we keep on having these discussions and if we keep on pushing for this agenda then women are going to be able to access those opportunities either leadership opportunities and as well as opportunities in both the formal and informal sector and uh, in the case for maybe men if it were like when you see for a man a man they cannot find themselves with having to excuse themselves from work because they don't have maybe things like maternal issues or having to go home for maternal things or anything. And uh, I also noticed in Kenya, they don't give a chance for the men to like be at home with, to support the wife who has just delivered. They don't consider it, they don't even imagine it. They cannot even give you the opportunity to be there for your child. So it is a bit unfair, let me say it that way that a woman needs to be like, um, be, 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 be like, let me just say suffer, <laughs> but in quotes, you have to like suffer or not earn as much as you're supposed to be earning just because you had to like stop working so that you can be able to at least now give life to that child and have, be a mother, you see? And as for men, maybe they would like to also leave the work and go and take care of their kids, but they cannot do that because in Kenya, they're not given the opportunity to do so, unlike other countries. All these inconsistencies of balancing marriages and work and, you know, all the factors that um, the society assumes at times, some are facts true to it, and others are just assumptions whereby you find like some employers have even the attitude that a woman, you know, cannot, uh, women cannot mostly for most women, especially for higher ranks or positions, cannot manage simply because they have to strike a balance, like the balance at work and for their families and other factors um, that surround, surround them is quite a challenge. So I feel like that is the main point that honestly that uh, brings about the disparity in job security, access and payment, because you find that from the word go, employers have the mindset and you know, it's like it's something that's 
most of them have already decided or something that is like a standing order, you know, uh, we have to employ more men than women, you know, considering all these factors that we have to go through and the challenges and the maybe the responsibilities and they also get to a point where they even assume that the productivity of women, you know, is not as good or, you know, equal to the expectation as compared to men. But I feel strongly it's about the gender, you know, <laughs> equity, how we just say it, not about the equality, but uh, in the essence of gender equity. So it brings the subject to the narrative of gender equity. Um, COVID-19 has really uh, changed our perception of how we view decency uh, in terms of, you know, job employment, because um, it really highlighted some of the negatives found in both industries. Let's talk about the formal sector. People were laid off. People received salary cuts. People were, uh, were, were, were being given forced leave so people who really entirely dependent on who really entirely dependent on uh, their jobs in the formal sector uh, found themselves in a sticky situation because how are they going to survive because um, we have talked about uh, job employment and survival so tell me how was someone who was working in like a corporate office was being laid off going to survive and talking about the informal sector uh, the issue of social protection that Bonfess was talking about. People who are in the informal sector found themselves in a sticky situation, people who didn't have social protection services. So COVID-19 really highlighted some of the negatives um, uh, that were found in both, both the informal and formal sectors. But um, if you take a closer look at uh, uh, young people uh, who are impacted the most in these two sectors, I think uh, it's people in the formal sectors because uh, we saw news of people turning their offices into, you know, poultry houses, you know, people rearing chickens in schools. Uh, we saw situations uh, about people moving from the capital, going back to their rural areas to do farming because they were laid off, they received salary cuts. Sorry, when the government uh, ordered that all the learning institutions should be closed, and um, so and uh, teachers had to come back home and uh, remain uh, for home for I think more than nine months. So during that period, the teachers that um, were in the private schools uh, had no any uh, like their schools uh, hadn't. Uh, like put uh, measures that Sagini is saying about social protections uh, in such kind of scenarios. So they were they were broke. They didn't have a job, and others had to come and now do the dead end jobs. Uh, you could find like a teacher uh, selling roasted maize on the road, or uh, uh, going into a construction site, or uh, uh, doing mining and. Uh, uh, so these are uh, so people are forced to uh, for once to come to do these uh, uh, those that one that initially had not uh, that were in decent jobs so they were forced to come and do the in the decent jobs for yeah for the first time. Uh. Um, but what I see with COVID nineteen that is it reveals something. Um, and that is that um, people should diversify, you know, where they get income from. And also that social protection is very important because we see the people who are working before, they were able to, to be supported through the time. Some are being paid through the entire time, but someone who is in the formal sector, it was very difficult for them to, to find this social protection, you know? And I appreciated things like Empresa and the bonga points, um, loyalty um, program points where you can convert the points to, to money. And that, that was something very important to many people, you know? And so what I can say about COVID-19 is that um, besides affecting people in the way it affected, the good thing to it is that it, re it revealed the importance of protecting, social protection of the informal sector which is essentially part of what we're talking about, a decent job where we have social protection. Like if you cannot work for three days and you're sick, are you protected? 
you know, and that's what uh, COVID-19 revealed. The people in the inform informal sector need that. So are we going to, to, to help them? So think uh, what will be done to make jobs more decent in Kenya is um, having policies and guidelines of what uh, we describe as decent jobs. So if you can have um, a framework that this is actually the guideline for what a decent job should look like, especially for the informal sector and now the implementation part of it and the evaluation of whether it's actually being implemented and if it's being implemented, what can be changed at a certain period of time. I feel like there should also be um, awareness and also information about decency and work, you know, the narrative on, on decency at work. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so for us to solve the thing of the making decent jobs is first of all to address education. Because we have like 15 or their percent of people going to colleges and universities. We are living a huge chunk of people outside of the equation. And how can they do anything even if they want to do by themselves, you know, to make a decent job? So, so even that report itself was talking about TVET a lot. The TVET is really the key to, 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 to you know, helping young people get jobs and, and we're talking about decent jobs. So yeah, that's basically what I would say. Education is very, 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 very key to, to having a decent job in the country. You know, we, we are elitist people. Given you went to university, you are the king of the country. So if you're talking about ourselves, I feel like we're missing out like 75 of the people who, you know, who, who cannot even pitch, who cannot have, make a pitch, a pitch deck. Education is very important for them in terms of um, for them to make a decent, a decent economy. So 